joining us for our spiritual communion service here at St Mary's in Bletchingley. I'm Reverend Fee and I'm the rector here. Our service this morning will be focusing on what it means to be called by God in this very difficult time of pandemic and also racial tension. We ask ourselves how God is calling us and to live in this very diverse world that he has made. And so we're going to be looking at a few, perhaps some difficult issues for all of us. But first, we're going to sing our hymn, Love Divine. And it reminds us of the power of the triune God at work in every aspect of our lives. And we sing it with the choir of St. Mary's. self-centeredness, blindness and sin of the life of our community. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his own image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer that collects our thoughts and prayers together on this first Sunday after Trinity. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Now I'm going to hand over to Karen who will read us our gospel this morning. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Theodos, Simon, the Caninian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, Find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, thank you, Karen. Let's take a moment to consider the words we heard from Matthew's Gospel. We are all called to share our faith with others, to make God's love known to all. How often do we do that? How do we do that? 
As we consider how we share the gospel, the good news, we are going to sing our next hymn. It is a real mission hymn, spurring us on to take the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ out to everyone. God's love embraces all and it's up to us, his followers, to share God's love with those we meet. And so let's sing together, Go Forth and Tell. So with the stirring words of our last hymn in our minds, we will now declare our faith with the words of the creed. Now it will come up on your screens and then we shall say it together. So let's have a moment to just think about these words. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The world has been turned upside down over the last four months. People have felt scared, anxious, bereft, isolated. There have been anger and distress at not being able to be with dying relatives or attending funerals. There's been frustration at having to cancel weddings and holidays and parties. And there's been concern about jobs and livelihoods and businesses. There's been concern about our children's education, feeding our families, and concern about the treatment of existing illnesses. And then right in the middle of this lack of control that we feel we have over our lives, this isolation and bereavement and fear and anger, there is the footage of, from Minneapolis that shocked the world. A man dies 
whilst his neck is pinned to the ground by a policeman's knee as three other officers look on and the man pleads for help, unable to breathe. The death of George Floyd whilst pleading for his life has come to, I think, represent the contempt that every black person must have felt at the hands of white people over the centuries. Now, some of us who are white may not want to talk about racism. We might think we aren't racist. Some of us might not understand why the crowds have been gathering in protest over the last couple of weeks because of George Floyd. What I have heard people say is, doesn't every life matter? I'm not a racist. I believe all lives matter. The crowds gathering and bringing down statues of former slave owners and traders may have felt disturbing or aggressive and given the isolation that the world has been in, maybe even reckless. But if the last 12 weeks has done anything to our society, surely it has made us consider what is important to us. What is it that we value? And what needs to change when we come out of lockdown? For me, George Floyd's death epitomises this. Why? Because a lot needs to change in our society. Yes, all lives matter. Of course they do. But the reason we've been in lockdown is because a caring society looks out for its most vulnerable. All of our lives were at risk from COVID-19, but we wanted to protect the most vulnerable. We wanted to look out for them. Black lives matter because black lives feel most vulnerable in our societies at the moment and the crowds have shouted this clearly across the world. I would say they've probably felt most vulnerable over the centuries. When he saw the crowds he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus looks with compassion, with concern for the sufferings of others because he suffered too. He knows what it's like to be marginalised, hated, abused, wrongly convicted, misunderstood. He knows what it's like to be helpless and harassed. He also knew that we needed to look deep into our souls and understand that we are all, whatever our colour, gender, sexuality or ability, made in the image of God. And that if we discriminate for any reason, we damage that image. Jesus set out two basic rules for us to live by. Sadly, over the centuries, our Western society has failed to live up to them. They were to love God with our whole heart and to love your neighbour as yourself. He knew that this was going to be a huge task and that our society would need help to do it. So he called imperfect, ordinary men to spread his message of love, which would then be spread by others. And it's a miracle that we still have the message of the Good Shepherd with us today. And we do have that message. And boy, do we need to listen to it today. The task of loving our neighbour, genuinely loving our neighbour, whoever they are, as ourself, is as hard as it has ever been. Those of us who are white may think we are really nice people and not racist. But in her book, White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism, sociologist Dr Robin DiAngelo sets out that American society, and we could argue British society too, has been shaped and biased towards white people. She points out that we have been taught that a racist is someone 
who consciously and intentionally seeks to hurt people based on race. And if that's what you think it means to be a racist, then of course it's offensive that I would say you were racist. But she says that it, that's not what she understands a racist to be. She goes on to say that all the racism she has perpetrated in her life was neither conscious or intentional, and yet it was still harmful to others. Dr D'Angelo suggests that all of us have been shaped by a social system that is fundamentally racist, and she says, nice white people who really aren't doing anything other than being nice people are racist. We are complicit with the system. There's no neutral place. So how do we change? Well, Dr D'Angelo suggests that we ask a different question of ourselves. We should stop and ask, how have I been shaped by the society that I live in? What does it mean to me to be white? And what does it mean to you to be black? And surely asking those questions are fundamental in the process of loving our neighbour as ourself. You know, love means all sorts of things. But one way of demonstrating love is to listen, to truly listen to the other person's experience of what it's like to be them. When we really listen to what it's like to be the other and how our society has shaped our exp their experience, we then begin to empathise with them, walk in their shoes, as the saying goes. And it's important to know our history, to be informed, so that we can develop honest compassion for the other and be able to say with conviction, I'm sorry for what has been and what is going wrong and to decide to not be complicit, not to just accept. Jesus called the 12 disciples out of their comfort zones, away from their homes, their jobs and their families. Perhaps he took them out of the social system that had shaped them so that they could be shaped by him, by God's image. And I think this is what we are being called to do now, to step out of our comfort zone and to ask some important questions of ourselves. What does it mean to be white or black? How has my race shaped who I am? How have I been shaped by the society that I live in? And listen. Listen to people of colour. Read black literature, watch videos, listen to music, learn about different cultures and to have at the forefront of everything that we do the fact that we are all made in the image of God, not some but all. Our Bishop of Southwark, Bishop Christopher, tweeted yesterday that our diversity is a gift and a blessing from God. He goes on to say that there are various things that mar the image of God in creation and that racial injustice is one of those terrible th wrongs which mars the image of God. We can all do better. That is our challenge, to do better. Because when we do, we will all be able to sit at the table as equals and with a hope that will not disappoint any of us. So I'm going to hand over to Mark, who will lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. God of all goodness, we call on you today. Throw your protective arms around those in the front line our doctors and nurses, our ambulance drivers and paramedics, our cleaners and administrators, all those who are risking their lives every day so that we might be healed. Our providers of essentials to keep our homes running, to communicate, to medicate, all those who are risking their lives so that we might live. 
our leaders, be they in government, in our church, in our communities and in our social groups. All those who are risking their lives so that we might recover. Protect them from infection, give them the strength to carry on and the wisdom to know the right path for us to follow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort the family of George Floyd, who died in such tragic circumstances in Minnesota. May we never forget that before the recent movement started, there was an innocent man loved by many who has now gone and left them bereft. Reach out to those who lead the campaigns calling for change in his name across the world. May their voices be heard by those who can make the change to ensure that black lives do indeed matter and that no one dies in the future being strangled at the hands of authority. Help all of us to have the understanding that such change needs to come fast if we are to avoid the injustices that all people of colour have suffered in preceding generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for charities in this time of uncertainty, for those people who give up their time, their money and their lives to care for the disabled, the depressed, the disenfranchised and the downtrodden. May they find the support in this time of lockdown to keep their charities going and to avoid the awful prospect that those whom they protect may be left to simply fend for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for the forgotten ones, those for whose cries for help have been drowned out by the constant commentary on death rates, PPE and ventilators, those that continue to die in wars, who live hand to mouth in refugee camps and who are made more vulnerable to abuse by being confined in a lockdown. May we be the ones who remember them and cry on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary, Peter and Paul and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your healing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are all one in Christ. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the Spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share the peace, the sh God's shalom with one another and offer that peace to those in our community and in our country across the world. Let's just offer God's peace up. So it's Music Sunday and as recognition of how important music is in our worship together, we use it to aid us in prayer and meditation. Hymns teach us, inspire us, lift us. Their words often stay in our minds long after the sermon has been forgotten. So as we prepare for our spiritual communion and reflect on the message of sharing God's love with all and for all, we will join our choir in singing, When in our music God is glorified. <laughs> Oh, 
Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in him. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we say together, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So please do share your spiritual communion with, along with me. The words of the prayer will appear on the screen.
all of us and that we are all made in his image and are his children. And yet we know that the world is broken and lives are hurting. As we hold Christ's love for all in our hearts and our hands and know that we who are his followers are called to make that love known, we say together our post-communion prayer. Lord God, you hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our anger and sorrow and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our communities, peace in our homes and peace in our hearts. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn speaks of following Christ in all sorts of places and sometimes it's not easy to follow Jesus because he leads us down all sorts of paths so that we can learn more about his love and the love he has for others. And so our final hymn is, Will You Come and Follow Me? So I do hope you have a really good week. We are looking at opening the church for private prayer. I can't give you an exact date. It might be this week, it might be next week, but we've got to make sure that everything is in place in church so that it's right for whoever comes in and it's safe and clean and we do everything correctly because we wouldn't want anyone to come in and get ill from being in church so so but we will let you know how how we progress with that and when the church will be open for private prayer but it will be soon so a final blessing for us all the spirit of truth lead you into all truth give you grace to confess that jesus christ is lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.